Hello, my name is Stella. Make sure I have lipstick on my teeth. Hello, my name is Stella Williams, and today I am so excited to be giving you guys a video on Greece. If you are traveling to Greece, if you ever want to travel to Greece, I got some pretty hot questions during my recent travels. I recently uploaded a two hour vlog <laughs> of my whole experience which you can click and see either here here or below wherever it is if you're interested but there were some questions i got along my trip the time i'm recording this is april 2023 and i hate to put dates in videos because i think videos are timeless but it's important because the first quarter of the year i spent a lot of time traveling and working overseas and as a bigger girl i know there's a lot of insecurities that people have in general even if you're not bigger um specifically to my plus size followers there's a lot of hesitation in traveling as a black woman there's a lot of hesitation traveling so today i want to put some stigmas to rest also if you are not big or ethnic and you have some concerns this will probably address them too so without further ado let's get into the hottest questions i got about traveling in greece so I actually started to write these in my notes during my travels because I realized there were so many of them. We're gonna talk about the number one thing that made me so embarrassed this entire trip. Now I went during off season, we'll talk a little bit more about off season later on with what that means and what that entails. But because I went in off season, I went to Mykonos, Greece. There were 10,000 people total on the island. If you watch my vlog that I did on this experience, you'll hear the taxi driver say that off season it's 10,000 locals who are on the island during peak season in the summer up to 200,000 people will be on the same exact island and it's an actual madhouse I'm here with all the locals the number one most embarrassing thing I did for this trip to Greece and let me just say I didn't even watch Mamma Mia I only packed white outfits now if you go on any Greece hashtag on any grease tag everyone's always in white there's beautiful white buildings and maybe a little santorini blue on things and everyone all the instagram girlies are on white and you're like oh that's the vibe of grease i love it i love it so what was my suitcase 100 percent white clothing cream mainly white though i swear to you every local on this island was only wearing black and i stuck out like a sore thumb now i don't know what it's gonna look like during peak season yet but i'm just letting you know now instagram will deceive you please bring alternative options of clothing to blend in a little bit more i hate going to a place as a tourist screaming i'm a tourist i feel like that's just more opportunity for you to get robbed followed killed i watch a lot of true crime so going and only packing white for this trip was embarrassing i was actually very embarrassed not gonna lie to you just know that's mainly an instagram thing you may not have known, I definitely didn't, otherwise I wouldn't have done it. So there's number one. All right, number two is no one stops at stop signs. And I know this seems trivial. It's important. In America, we have a rule that pedestrians have the right of way and all vehicles and traffic must stop for pedestrians. That is not a thing, especially in Mykonos. Stop signs are apparently optional. I don't know if they're legally optional. Societally, they're very optional. Um, my first night, my taxi driver said, you need to just run across the street. And I wasn't even on like a super busy street. It was like two in the morning. He's like, you need to just run. And the morning I was crossing this crosswalk every single day and there, it's at a stop sign with a pedestrian walk. It doesn't matter. If there is a stop sign, I guess not everyone needs to follow it. Number three on the list today is getting honked at, flirted with, honked at, cat called, it's gonna happen. The Greeks are flirts. I don't know what to say. Uh, my intention was to not go on this trip to date, to look around, whatever. In fact, I like my personal life how it currently is and um, didn't need that kind of attention in Greece and it happened. So just be aware the Greeks are hot. They are Greek gods for a reason and um, they do not have a problem letting you know how fine you are. So just be mindful, be, be mindful about the people you meet and the people you run into and just don't be too alarmed at the honks. It's, mo it's very friendly mainly. There is one story I gotta tell though. We were in a restaurant and we met this guy. If you watch the vlog, you'll see it. The next day we went to see him and his friend was like, yeah, he's a baby face like Jeffrey Dahmer. And I was like, huh? And he's like, he has a baby face like Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm in a foreign country. So it's mainly friendly, but um, just know that it happens. A lot of light spirits, a lot of light heart, and a lot of flirtatious activity going on. All right, number four, 
This one was such a shock to me. Did you guys know? You know the theme of everything being white in Greece and so beautiful on the islands? Did you know they paint them white? Now I went during Independence Day weekend, so I'm not sure if it was specifically for Independence Day. I'm gonna say it's not though, because days after Independence Day, they were still painting white. The ground they were painting white, the walls they were painting white, constantly on every street, things were getting painted white. In my mind, I don't know if I just thought things just stayed pristinely white or it was pressure washed with ocean water or something, but no, like there are people all day, every day on every corner with paint and paint brushes in hand and painting everything white. Dumbfounded by this, like I was so astonished that this was happening. And one day we passed this uh, street and we realized everything was dingy and dirty. We saw the reason that it was always painted white. I had no idea that was a thing. It does look beautiful. And you could definitely tell the difference of the streets that are painted and aren't painted. But for some reason, I thought it was just something that was like cleaned or all I know is I probably need to get in the paint business and find some suppliers in Mykonos. That's all I know. Okay, the next one we're gonna talk about is being a black woman in Greece. Did I feel anything, you know, racial <laughs> toward me while I was there? And I'm going to say no. I do not feel I had any racism toward me while being in Mykonos. And from, I judge this based on how I meet people. Uh, when I travel now, I do love to meet locals and make friends and meet people and have a good time and vibe. I know what it's like to be racially profiled. Um, hello, Dallas, Texas. I know you guys love my TikToks about you. It, it wasn't like that at all. Everyone, now this is argumentative, but I say everyone was friendly and I was talking to a Greek guy and he's like, no, we're not. And I'm like, my experience is everyone's been incredibly friendly. And I never felt any disdain for the color of my skin. And I never felt any judgment for the color of my skin or I don't feel I had any um, internalized racism acts toward me or any kind of microaggressions toward me. I didn't feel any of that. In fact, I felt incredibly safe in my skin there. I did not feel no and before you're like, you're blonde. I wasn't blonde, I had my black hair and like, I just felt very safe as a black woman there. And not only that, can I shout out to all the black people traveling to Greece? There were, my first day there, there was a woman solo traveling. I, she wasn't American, but she was black. She was beautiful, black, by herself, solo traveling in this restaurant and I was like, that's it. And then my last day there, there was a family of just like American black people and they were just living their best life. Like grown men, grown women, um, not young. They were a little older, just enjoying a vacation. And it felt so safe to experience that. It felt beautiful to one watch it. Cause I always say I love to see, you know, people get out and thrive, but it felt good to know that wasn't just my experience. Like I'm experiencing other people have great experiences in the same country. And to me, that makes me feel even more safe in my skin. I think this is a fantastic place to travel, especially if you are a person of color. So next we're gonna talk about off season versus peak season. So off season means any time of year, I like to relate it to any time of year the kids aren't in school. So off season, or they are in school. So off season to me would be January, February, March, not spring break, April, August, end of August, September, October, November. Eight months out of the year I consider off season. Not a lot of tourists are happening. Anytime I think that the kids are not in school to me is peak season, Christmas breaks, summers, spring break, Thanksgiving break, any time where the kids may not be in school, I'm like, ah, it's peak season somewhere. Usually it's more expensive to travel, it is way more packed, and it's usually not the same experience. Doesn't always mean it's worse. So because I went off season to Mykonos, it was a little bit colder than the summer months would be, but I had a ton of benefits because there were only 10,000 people on the island. I got to meet locals, have a really authentic experience and learn the culture and actually make friends on an island because it wasn't loaded with tourists. Um, I also got to see it in its more natural state. Countries like Greece and towns like Mykonos thrive off tourism as a business. So there's two months out of the year, three months, two and a half months, they're making the most money out of the whole year. And because of that, they bank on tourism. So in peak season, or I guess let's talk about off season because that's why it's my favorite. I got so lucky 
I don't have any of it in here, but I got so lucky just with prices. Right now, the euro is really comparable to the dollar. I don't know what it will be at the time of you seeing this video, but right now it's pretty even, which means it's pretty great. So what would cost you 10 euro may only be like $11.30, 20 cents. So the difference isn't too contrasted, but why this works in our favor. Mykonos is an island. It's a five hour ferry ride away from Athens. I had no idea. Take the flight. Take my advice. Take the flight. And if you do take the ferry, book first class. Because it was off season and we're on an island, these people again rely on what? Tourism economy to continue their businesses and to make a living. Everything is so discounted during off season. It's my favorite way to travel. My hotel front desk guy he was the same guy the entire night we literally by our last night we're like do you ever get a break he's like no we just fired someone so right now no we're waiting on the new guy literally he's like you guys are really lucky you guys got this room at 30 a night i got mine at 70 a night because i had a hot a hot tub in my room he's like these rooms start at around 700 to a thousand dollars a night during the summer we got ours for 30 and 71 dollars and i had a hot tub in my room and for my entire stay it was 421 dollars Total, taxes, everything included. That is such a steal. I looked up the same hotel five nights in June, July, $3,200. I got it for 420. Like for me, I would much rather experience life cost effectively than experience it during peak season. Now it's very different. So during peak season, everyone tells me there's so many parties and you know, all the artists are out there, DJ Khaled, French Montana, 50 Cent was performing last year. It's a big party. It depends on what kind of experience you want. I prefer experiences where I feel like a local and I feel fun, but it's also cool now because I went in off season and made Greek friends. They say, whenever you come back, if you want to come back in the summer, you have a place to stay if you want. Hey, I'll get you, I work here, I'll get you in this party. I work there, I'll get you in this party. Like that connection, one with the person was so much more valuable. And then two, the fact that they're like, hey, and next time you come, like hit me up, I've got you. That made going in off season so much more worth it, period. I felt safe. I kept asking, I was like, how safe is Mykonos? How safe is it? And they're like, it's so safe. They say in the summer though, it's usually the tourists causing problems. Even more so on the note, I saw a gorgeous little apartment I would totally rent in Mykonos. So that's something I'm probably also considering. My toxic trait is definitely wanting to move everywhere I go, which is why I'm even considering moving to Paris. If you missed that announcement, that'll be somewhere popped up too. It was, it was great off season. So for example, also I went to a boutique and everything is like made in Italy. Again, we're in the Mediterranean. So everything's like local. So made in Italy, um, made in Spain, like all these beautiful 100% linen, 100% cotton shirts. They have tags on them for 65, 75 euro. You know what the lady tells me? Everything in the store is 10 euro. Everything. I didn't even realize till I got back to my hotel room that the tag said 75 euro. Why, again, it's off season. No one's there to shop. The locals aren't gonna buy what the tourists buy. So when a tourist walks in your store, you're just gonna get the sale. So let me tell you about these shoes. These shoes were eaten up on the internet. They lasted one night in Mykonos. I'm just gonna show you. They, they did not last. These are a high quality shoe, but um, I was partying very hard and I'm gonna take them to a cobbler to get fixed because these shoes are very cute. I was just on the cobblestone walking miles in these shoes and they didn't last. But I do wanna talk about the shoe because I didn't notice until I put together my Mykonos vlog, just how deep this goes. I asked the lady in the store, I said, how much are these shoes? She said 50 euro. I said, great, I'm, these are cute. This is a good buy. I was a little drunk. I said, this is my one drunk buy, let's do it. I bought the shoes. I wore the shoes out of the store. I walked miles in these shoes. These shoes have seen war. It happened. I go collect links, because everyone's like, Stella, where are the sandals from? Where are the sandals from? Where are the sa sandals from? I go collect links. I go to the BCB website, BSB website. Tell me why these shoes are 99 euro on site. It just furthermore extended my things are cheaper in person right now because they depend on tourism sentiment. Obviously, I I would pay a hundred a hundred euro for the shoe. That's a, like a hundred and ten dollars maybe. But the fact that I got it for fifty euro in person is just like how I'm showing you how much stuff is discounted during off season just to keep the economy rolling. It's fantastic. I just shipped the box today. A full Poshmark size box full of baby clothes for my niece and nephew. All of it costs less than a hundred dollars. I think it was ninety six euro. So it's a little over $100. When I go to the site now, this happened when I went to Paris in January too. I got my niece and nephew's clothes from this bougie, 
bougie, bougie, bougie baby store. And I was FaceTiming my nephew last weekend and I was like, man, like, let me go see if I can get him more clothes. Tell me why them little baby shoes were $160 and they had little baby sweaters for 200 and something dollars. No way. If you know me, you know me. I'm too frugal for that. No. But in person, again, going to all these places during off season, I was able to find these deals for so inexpensive. So that's probably my favorite part. All right. Next, we're going to talk about um, being plus size in Greece. I think Greece is a great place for plus size people because I feel like a lot of plus size, I feel like a lot of Greeks are plus size themselves. Like maybe, um, like late 30s to middle age Greek women um, tend to be a little bit more plump. So it's nothing, I'm gonna say in off season, it's nothing that's like side eye weird. I think maybe a little bit in the clubs with like the younger crowd, I got a little bit of side eye, but nothing where I was like uncomfortable or wanted to leave. I think my experience was great. Again, like the people are gonna flirt, like it's fun. The, the girls, you're still making friends, it's having a good time. I think there's always going to be a couple people who are a little bit judgmental and you don't really know why, right? You don't know if it is the color of your skin. You don't know if it's your weight. You don't know if it's what you're wearing. You don't know if it's what you look like. You don't know why people could be like that. Um, and some people may just have that look on their face. I could see how in peak season though, with more tourism and maybe a little bit more frowned upon to be plus size in Greece. So that is something to think about when we have more of like the Ibiza crowd and we have more of the like upper echelon type people there, I could see how it might be a little bit more eh. My experience I would say would be solid like 80% positive being plus size in Greece. Um, 20% though, I'm used to stairs so I get it but you know the glances up and down or like the looking or the or the oh gosh this is the worst part. The squeezing through the people. The bars are tiny y'all. The bars are tiny. Being, I felt like a whale <laughs> in the bars trying to squeeze by people. People don't move. They don't move. That was very difficult. That was very difficult. So that's part of that 20%. And people don't care that you're trying to get by. Not so fun. Being on the beach plus size, I didn't get any weird looks. I didn't get, you know, people were minding their business. Getting in taxis. I think one time in one taxi, he, he did have to rearrange us because he had like a stick shift and we were going up mountains. So he's like, okay, well you sit here, you sit here and like, we'll be fine. But he didn't make a big deal about it. Again, people were generally like, whatever. I, it, I didn't feel like a big inconvenience to anyone so and then clothing let's talk about that there's no plus size clothing options I fit in a men's XL so you know some of the clothing items I bought for myself were in XL and I just kind of thought it was cute and make it work there's not a lot of like plus size clothing there so shopping is probably out for yourself. But again, just do what I did. Shop for my niece, nephews, my sister, whatever. Have a good time. All right, next we're gonna talk about the English versus Greek. Now, the Greeks in Athens and in Mykonos speak perfect English. I expected it to, be, I didn't really know what to expect, but I did expect a lot of Greek, kind of like when I do travel to France, like, okay, you gotta kind of just know French, which is partially why I started learning French. But in Greece, the same thing, I kind of just expected everyone to always be speaking Greek. You know, it's Greek to me. A lot of people speak English, and I, won I remember I was in a conversation one time, I was like, why does everyone here speak so much English? I wasn't expecting that. And they're like, we depend on tourism. And because of that, anything to make a tourist happy, they have done it, including speaking English. So you will be very well off if you are an English speaker in Greece, everyone speaks English. It's not as perfect as like when I went to Amsterdam and everyone spoke perfect English, but it's definitely like, I feel like it's almost mandatory that, hey, if you live in Greece, you gotta know English too, um, at least for the sake of tourism. So for the people who didn't know much English, it was very difficult because there's not a lot of words that I feel sound the same. Like I was talking to this one guy, not, Romantic. Well, he tried it, but not me. But I was talking to this one guy, and my his his friend was like, "Sorry, he doesn't speak English, but he thinks you're very cute." But my communication with him was very hard. So then, when I went to the WhatsApp and I'm messaging him over WhatsApp, it was easier because you know you can copy paste and translate. So I learned some word like yasas, yaso, yasas. Hey, hey. Greek is something now I want to start to learn a little bit of the basics of because I think it is definitely necessary. And not even just the guys, but like at restaurants with maybe a little bit older crowd who may not be as well versed in their English, it would be nice to just know a couple basic words to just assimilate in the culture more and to be able to communicate a lot better because just because we're English speakers does not mean we rule the world. All right, next, 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 next. We gotta talk about cheese pie, the best thing. Any chance I could, 
I didn't even like feta before this trip. Let me be very clear. I detested feta before my trip to Greece. Allowed myself to experience the food of the culture, whether what I like, what I didn't like. I don't like olives, I don't like feta, I don't like tomatoes. By the end of that trip, that's all I wanted to eat. The food is so fresh, the food is so good, um, but the cheese pies, the cheese pies. It's literally feta in this phyllo dough and it's like wrapped around and it's hot and it's just so freaking good. I ate it every chance I get because I don't know when I'm gonna get it again. If I see it in America, I'll order it and let y'all know if it's the same. It was so delicious and then one time I dipped it in honey for breakfast, so good. And while we're on the topic of food, let's talk about food allergies. I was so nervous for this trip because it's Mediterranean food. I'm in the Mediterranean and I have a lot of nut allergies and I know a lot of places use nuts. I did not seem to have any visible issues with my allergies, but I will say I did have issues with my allergies and how I know that is because my face started to break out. Whenever my face breaks out here, I know it's because I've consumed something I am allergic to. So I don't know where hidden there were allergies, but they were somewhere, but I did my best to just you know let them know of my allergies and not consume anything with nuts in them it got in somewhere I could see I had my EpiPen on me at all times so I knew I was good never had to use it thank God but just know that it is seemingly very very allergy friendly and even one shop denied me gelato because they said if you have a nut allergy we can't even risk giving you any gelato so so let's talk about other things. The water was incredible it was um, just warm enough to swim in any colder I wouldn't have done it um, taxi you need cash. There are only two taxis on the island at this time and you just call the numbers that you have to get numbers from a local or from your, a hotel or something. Cash is king in Mykonos. It is an island. It is not a mainland. They aren't all hip to the Apple Pays and the and the it, cash is still king on these islands. I swear to you, bring, bring, bring cash. A lot of the restaurants do have Apple Pay to pay, but I'm talking about just to transport. Their city buses, cash though. Taxis, you need cash. Like everything is cash, 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 cash. Don't think because we've ditched cash in America that you can ditch cash in Greece. Don't do it. Now I will give you guys a life hack because I hate getting scammed when I travel internationally. How I let people know I'm not dumb is I use the Uber app. There is no Uber app on Mykonos. It does not work. But in Athens it does. And so what a taxi may get you, they may be like 40, 50 euro to get to the, to get to the airport or to the ferry. I'm like, I'll just use Uber because they know on Uber it's a guaranteed taxi fare. Guaranteed, it'll be like $20, 19 euro, 20 euro. But they don't they don't think everyone knows that. And most people don't. Use the Uber app anywhere you can for a taxi. If your country you're in does not offer Ubers, get the Uber app and it will connect to local taxis. That will save you so much money. And the last thing I wanna to talk today about over my dog snoring is bartering. You can barter everything. Now for Purposes of buying souvenirs, I chose not to barter because I wanted to support local, the local economy. I thought, I saw how important that was. So I made sure not to barter in any stores. This one lady, I spent over $630 euro in her store. I don't even wanna to translate to what that is in American. I only know it's tears. But I, she was offering me deals at first and at the end I said, just take it. Because again, they survive off this tourism. But you are allowed to barter. Hey, like, can I get like two of these for 50 or one of these for whatever? Like, you're allowed to do that. Same with taxis. Um, on the way back from Mykonos, I was in Athens. I needed a ride to the airport. The guy's like, 50 euro. And I was like, no, thank you. I'll go find someone else. And he's like, okay, 30. And I was like, okay. And that, at that point, I was like, do I take 30 or do I take 25 on the Uber, nap, Uber app? I was like, let me just take the 30. I'm here. Whatever, I have the cash, let's go. And even more so, I thought I lost one of my $10 or my 10 euro bills. And he was like, okay, 20 is fine, like whatever. And, but I ended up finding it. I was like, I know I have it in my purse. I ended up finding it, so it was okay. But bartering is okay. I know it's not a thing here. It is okay overseas. Food was good, people were good, vibes were good. Pictures, the photo opportunities, amazing. People were great, friendly. Like honestly, Mykonos is a place I would definitely go again. I think you need to be safe when meeting. If you're going for like romantic, I don't do like hard drugs. I don't party too hard. Um, just make sure you're safe. Anytime I felt like I got a little too drunk, I made sure to just go back to the hotel. Don't ever let anyone know where you're staying. I don't care who you meet. Get WhatsApp. You can communicate with the people of the island much, much easier. A lot of people don't even like live on the island. So a lot of these people live on like the mainland and these companies will put them up in apartments on, in the island um, just for like the seasons to work so it's pretty incredible but I would just say go have fun this is definitely a place I'm glad 
I went. This was like the number one place to visit on like my entire bucket list of my entire life, like over France, over London, over anything. Like this was the one place I wanted to visit and I'm so happy I got to go. Stacey, I'm so happy I got to go with you and I will totally be going back. I felt so at home. I felt so at peace at home. It felt right. The walking, everything just felt perfect. Like the trip was perfect. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any more questions about Greece, let me know. I made sure to like kind of write down the main things, but anything specific, let me know. I was a little ill yesterday, so that's why we're getting a little sit down video. But any more travel videos you guys want from me, please, please, please let me know. I've been traveling so much this year and I'd love to share anything I can about my travels. I will see you guys really, really soon. Love and light. Bye.